When it comes to RV travel, nothing matters more than your safety and snacks. So without working brakes on your trailer and having them properly set up, things will be stressful, cause anxiety. It's just not pretty. You know, at the other end of the spectrum of just stress and anxiety, you know, something could go catastrophically wrong for you and for others on the roadways. So today, how about we talk about brakes and setting up those brake controllers that get everything stopped safely let yeah let's do that so that none of our listeners become one of those youtube videos oh gosh well that's always the question people have can i tow this and we're like oh yeah but you can't stop it yeah stopping is really a very important key in towing anything (laughs) to go you must stop i think yoda said that oh is that what yoda said i I don't remember yoda saying that Welcome to the RV Small Talk Podcast, where we talk about lightweight trailers, truck campers, and the people, places, and adventures that go along with them. We're your hosts from Princecraft RV. I'm Clint. I'm a B. And I'm PJ. And thank you so much for joining us today. You know, we invited a, a, a special friend, special as in special. Yeah, special. Uh, to join us again today, you all know him and love him. His name is... Cody. Cody. He's here to talk about brakes. He's going to make you stop in your tracks. He's Cody. Oh, man. Let me remind you that you can find the show notes for this episode and any other episode over at rvsmalltalk.com. And there's still time left right before the Christmas holidays here in 2021 to go check out our holiday gift guide. That's over at rvsmalltalk.com. And you'll see a link right there for the holiday gift guide. Do remember those are Amazon affiliate links. Won't cost you anything more, but it will help out the podcast. So thank you in advance. You can always send questions or comments to questions at rvsmalltalk.com or you can call Call us and leave us a voice message, and then we can play it on the podcast, and you'll be famous. 512-843-1311. Questions or comments can go to 512-843-1311. So this uh, idea came up because we had one of our longtime friends who's joined us for so many of the Texas Tiny Trailer Rallies, Amy McGee. She, uh, she's she been having some problems with her brake controller, and I remember when I was setting up brake controllers, man, I just messed with the setting until it started to feel like I when I was slowing down or coming to a stop like it was as if I wasn't towing something but I didn't really have any of the science or theory I just messed with controls I'm the opposite I have never touched mine you're correct I set yours up last time you towed thanks Cody yeah, <laughs> I don't know how well it did that, since I wasn't in there. Perks but there of the you job, go. I mean, Lindsay. It felt like it job. did fine. My Perfect. neighbors love. Did it. you stop? Yeah. Did you? Eventually, yes. Did you? Well, yeah. Eventually, he's good. Bottom of the hill. So uh, <laughs> my neighbors love it when I'm t- when I'm trying to mess with the settings on my brake controller because you know I set the gain all the way up and I go down the road at 15, 20 miles an hour and I tap my brakes and and they lock up and start squealing and all that. Oh, I guess I'll adjust that down. It's trial and error. So, Cody will help us to understand brakes, brake systems that are available, but also brake controllers. So, Cody, enlighten us. To start off, we were going to talk about yeah, what are- Texas Texas rules for for trailer brakes. Yeah. Um, laws, what what we've got going on there. And, and what the reason need. would be because Texas may be a little different than some of the other places where you may be towing an RV, but uh, but just going to be pretty standard stuff to most places yeah every place has rules and limits i they just vary a little bit but you know what is texas's limit right now texas's current limit is a trailer with a gross of 4500 pounds or more does require to have trailer brakes on the trailer so that's a gross that doesn't mean that's what the trailer weighs correct if it could weigh up to 4500 it might weigh 2500 correct but it still needs brakes. Absolutely. Okay. Well, and some of them are higher in other states, I think. Yep. Some states are really low. Really low. Yeah. Isn't California like 1,400 pounds? 1,499. So right under 1,500 pounds, uh, is, they require a trailer to have brakes on it. Is there any state where you don't have to have trailer brakes at all? Not that I've seen. That's good. <laughs> I was going to avoid I guess states. that's a good thing, right? <laughs> that's a good thing. So why do we need... Okay, why do you need trailer brakes? Because my vehicle has brakes. You do. So the the biggest thing is, is that the service brakes on your tow vehicle are designed primarily for stopping the tow vehicle. Um, they want uh, trailer brakes on a trailer for 
safer stopping of the entire load. If you tow a small enough trailer, it's going to stop behind you. We hear that all the time. That trailer's not very big. I got a big old truck. I'm good. I don't need extra brakes. And and then they say, oh, I've towed cattle trailers and I've towed, you know, all this my whole life and I got this. I don't need trailer brakes. Well, I grew up with cattle trailers only having the four pin connector and those only run the lights. That's right. correct. That's it's different than it used to be, but still, a lot of trailers, the smaller ones, even five years ago, small teardrops and things didn't have brakes on them, and right. now everything we carry here has brakes on. Well, it. I think it's so common for the for the GVWR, the axle rating, and all that, even on these small trailers, to be right around that two thousand mark. Well, if any of them are to be sold in California. Well, you might as well design them all to be sold in California. Right. Yep. Right. I guess that's true. That's the way I would think about it. If I were building them, yeah, if I, I got to be compliant at this level over here, I might as well do it for everything. That way it's easier going down the assembly line. Mm-hmm. Well, and also there'd be customers who say, but, you know, can I get one with brakes? Mm-hmm. And as a service shop, that's a one off brake install. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Wow. Ridiculous. So. I mean, another thing that maybe gets taken into account here is it may be a small trailer, but what if you're towing it with your Honda CRV, or what if you're towing mm. it with your, you know, Plymouth Voyager? Yeah. I mean, Plymouth Voyager. You've never heard of a Plymouth Voyager? What is a Plymouth Voyager? You know, Plymouth doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. She's just dating herself. I am dating myself. That's a minivan, you know, right? It's a little minivan yeah. thing, but. I guess I thought of it it's because like a Mayflower. No, <laughs> it's not quite it's that not old. Quite that old. <laughs> because we had one in here recently, and that made me think of it because yep. there was wiring in. Yeah, we see all kinds of. Fun we see stuff. all kinds of weird things yeah. that you're like that. That should be towing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Really, yep. you're going to tow with that? It can hardly get itself up the hill. Yeah. You know, yeah. but then going down the hill, I always worry about can it stop? Yeah. Right. So, mass momentum. You got issues, and we we yeah, think we, about this obviously with uh, with towing on roadways and all that. But we'll get down to talking about some stuff on off road stuff. Where obviously you're not going to have flat ground. Sometimes you're going to have uh, drop offs and things. So having those brakes really helps you to control the whole works to a degree. It may even save you. It could. So if you're going around that curve and it starts to slide off. The edge of the mountain, Mm -hmm. you can put on your brakes and stop it. Well, or if you're going downhill. I don't know if it's going to keep you from going off the side of the mountain. I'm like, wait, wait, (laughs) wait. This is giving me anxiety. Yeah. Well, Well, be sure you have brakes. If you have brakes. And it's not going to stop me from going (laughs) off the mountain. Well, have you ever driven down a mountain? One time. Okay. You know, they got a trailer. Well, so that mountains have runoff lanes because as they're going downhill, they can get brake fade. Mm hmm. And they can brake fade. Brake fade is basically so your brakes on your vehicle and on your trailer are designed to work for a certain period of time up to a certain temperature. And as they get hotter, they don't break as well. So then your your braking efficiency actually declines and the vehicle will basically run away, kinda which is like why they call at, it a runaway lane. Yeah, kind of mm-hmm. like us at five o'clock. We we get brake fade. We run away. Yes. We, run, we need a runaway lane. Yep, so you're do. telling me that people who live in the mountains and share roads with 18 wheelers mm-hmm. and 18 wheelers just run away. It can happen. Mm-hmm. It's not ideal. Trust me. <laughs> Does it happen often? Those runaway lanes, like you go off the yeah, side of the road and, and then, then they go up. up right. So it can stop them because yep. they and don't they have brakes. They usually have a fairly thick layer of like gravel so it bogs so, them down yeah. and but slows you're just them down. on the highway with these trucks that absolutely don't have, have no good brakes, brakes anymore exactly. yeah it happens why you, that's why it's so strict for your cdl drivers on their brake systems airlines all that stuff is checked regularly all right let's move on that's crazy yeah she's stressed out now folks <laughs> okay, i don't live in the mountains so yep. but if you are going up and down the hills even off road and you have a trailer that does not have brakes and it is not helping with your stopping then it, then that trailer can push you off of your yes. trail sure. and over a cliff. yes sure. if, if it's behind you so it pushing can, on your vehicle it can help you to stop you're right to keep you from launching yourself yeeting yourself off a cliff and becoming whatever <laughs> yeeting that, whatever that yeeting ye- yeeting uh and becoming whatever that Yeet. uh movie is bro Bro. Those are my kids' two favorite words now. Yeet and bro. That's fabulous. Yeet and bro. <laughs> bro, I'm going to yeet you. 
<laughs> oh man. So we kind of nailed down why your tow vehicles brakes aren't enough. Yeah, they're just not enough. They're just not big enough. They're not they're not there for all of the added weight. I mean, for for especially a lot of our customers cuz they're not towing with a you know, F350 Ram 3500 yeah. Chevy 3500 truck that's designed for heavy haul every single day. Um, you know, they're in here towing with their Subaru Outbacks mm-hmm. and other small vehicles that don't have very large braking systems on them. So they they can overheat, mm-hmm. you know, so utilizing those trailer brakes is definitely important. Yeah. Now, is there another situation where having trailer brakes is useful if it's because obviously slowing and stopping, those are your primary. Mm hmm. But is there another situation out there? Absolutely. What is it? Ah, no, what is look it? at the setup. Do you what guys get it? that? What I a setup. Yeah, one. what a setup. So <laughs> so sometimes uh, going down the highway, you experience some uh, tail wag or some um, fish tailing fish tailing from your trailer or some sway, depending on Never whatever you want to call it. Never. No. Never. Oh, well, you're special. Why no. is that? I'm kidding. It always oh. happens to me. <laughs> I tried to set her up for because I have a weight distribution uh, hitch with sway control, but yeah. uh, that one fell through. But especially if you have a small trailer. Right. Small trailers, not, the- all, not all trailers require a weight distribution with sway control and stuff like that due to weight ratings. Yeah. But they can still sway around. So Especially if that big truck goes whizzing by you and that pushes the, the air. Yep. Yep. You yeah. have a rail on one side and then a truck on the other side. Oh, man, that- and then, and, it's and then the wind changes. changes, and then it pushes you out. Like, uh-huh. yeah, that's when you grab the yeah. steering wheel with both hands, and your yeah. knuckles turn white. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yep. So yep. Say, yep. Shut up, kids! I'm driving. Yeah, you turn the radio down <laughs> yeah. so you can see better yes. and pay attention. Right? <laughs> Isn't that the down. weirdest thing? I always turn the radio down. I if am you that think guy. about it, though, it's not that weird. No. No. Because you're all you're doing is stopping the influx of information under a stressful situation, it, is which is what you would do at any point. You're taking some load and off of your sensory like, system. Why do you turn down the radio when you're looking for a direction? Well, duh, because do you want someone yelling at you while you're trying to concentrate? It yeah. makes so much sense to yeah, me. Yeah, but it, why is it relaxing when you're driving and then it is... Because you have to concentrate on it something. It is anxiety when you're concentrating. Because you're concentrating. Okay, I guess it just... Still, it's weird. Hmm. It's, it's like weird. listening to music while you're coloring or listening to music while you're Try trying to, to do something. a math equation. <laughs> yeah. They're different. Okay. All right. So now that the radio's turned down, <laughs> you can you These are really important <laughs> things to discuss. You Deep. can you can do a manual activation on your brake control. So all brake control should have some way to do a manual activation. And if you just reach over there and kind of do a quick activation on it, that'll usually slow the trailer down. Mm-hmm. And kind of bring it back into line behind your tow vehicle to bring that sway back under control. Well, right. usually normal operation, the brake controller uh, senses input from your brake pedal, right? In Somehow. some way, shape, or form. In some yes. way, shape, or yep. form. Yep. So you're actually slowing down the tires on the tow vehicle and the tires on the trailer. However, on manual activation, you're only controlling the tires on the trailer in that moment. That's correct. Which makes perfect sense because if you're driving and the back end is unstable, Mm -hmm. if you put your brakes on the vehicle and not the trailer, that's going to push that trailer forward and it's going to have more of a tendency to turn and try to push right. against That's the vehicle and That's going to exacerbate the problem of, of wagging. Right. But mm-hmm. if you stop the trailer and not the vehicle, it's going to just drag it it's more like dragging an anchor yeah it's kind of like dragging an anchor exactly so it's going to want to come back into line behind your vehicle well even if it doesn't it's just going to quit moving around because you're dragging it yeah instead of rolling it quite Mm -hmm. as much Mm -hmm. i think of when my son is is trying to push me and all that he's all over the place and i'm trying to to slow him down i'm in front Uh and he's all over the place but if i instead if i'm trying to pull him by the foot and dragging him across the floor because it cleans the floor and it gets him to his bedroom he's he's <laughs> he's traveling in a straight line he's not waggling around no, is that he that friction is is causing him to go st- straight from point a to point b i can wag as a tow vehicle all i want he's all right. going straight all right where are we on this whole brake situation so we are talking about brake controls when, well, brake systems but first no? i want to talk about okay. ice a lot of people ice. say they want brake controllers because of ice mm. i don't get that Do they make ice i don't think they make ice no know. we what? have something that makes ice but i don't think it's a brake controller that's interesting uh-huh. yeah hmm. so what do you do on ice i yeah. mean because it seems like if you're driving you don't want to slam on your brakes with your vehicle at all but wouldn't you be causing the same issue if you break your trailer cody break the ice on this 
So if you hit a patch of ice and everything starts moving around, then you're off the patch of ice, Mm -hmm. but you're still, of course, sliding. Is it helpful to try to put brakes on your trailer and not your vehicle at that point? I would have them already installed. I wouldn't try to put brakes on my trailer while while I'm towing. That's a good point, Clint. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. I would have no idea. We tried idea. to make a helpful podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. But there were too many jokes for Clint. He just too couldn't. Too many jokes for Clint. Oh, my PJ gosh. PJ brought up ice. He couldn't stop. Well, because people say that. So okay. I'm thinking that if your trailer is out of control behind you mm-hmm. and you have something to grab, maybe it would be helpful, but maybe it would just be a panic button that makes you feel better. So uh, my understanding of really slick surfaces, mm-hmm. um, let's say, okay, let's look at two different surfaces. One where you have good friction Mm -hmm. then you want those brakes to to really be aggressive and to or even to lock up because you've got good friction but if it is a squishy or slick or zero friction type surface like ice yeah then you would prefer them not to lock up because then they're that's what i would think it's like a hockey puck it's just going to slide forever slide around so if you use the brakes particularly on the on the rv the trailer behind you you would want that gain i'm guessing to be almost bottomed out to where yeah but you're not going to be adjusting that slowing yeah you know well if you're driving in slick conditions you can adjust that before the sliding ever starts you say i see the weather yes i can adjust it down that's my guess or that's as i understand it so we're all texas folks here so you guys heard that phone number at the beginning don't so, use it for ice questions. So, no, not questions, but answers. Oh, oh I want useful. answers. Yeah. Do you guys ever need the brake controllers for bad weather, icy yeah. weather? Because I don't know. I don't know. We I, don't see a lot of that. I, I imagine they I put chains to leave on their tires, too, on their trailer tires. You think? Mm, mm. I wouldn't see the need for them other than keeping it from, I guess, slipping on the ice, possibly. But Which typically, is, chains yeah. are on vehicles of course all right you know, we're not ice so experts we are so definitely not ice we, experts we, we but don't i think know. i agree with clint you're gonna want your gain turned down if there's any kind of boost feature you're not gonna want that on because you don't want the brakes locking up on you so you're not creating more of a slide or skid more issue. of a problem mm-hmm. yeah just like slamming on your brakes in your vehicle when you're skidding mm-hmm. yep okay exactly what types of brake systems are there so typically the the two different types of brake systems you're going to see out there for most trailers is either going to be a drum style system or a disc brake system which is the same type of technology that you would see on vehicles yeah but drum technology seems to be the old the old technology like I, I would get on board with that drum technology is definitely older technology but it is very widely used on trailers because it is less um expensive and okay. easier, easier to set up, less components, okay. things like that. Okay, I've got the million dollar question. Million dollars. And, Let's and, go. and if I'm out there shopping for a trailer, do I really care? Do I really care what brake system is on this trailer? I think it depends I, on what the trailer I, is. I think it depends on what the trailer is. And I think it's going to depend on, on your personality. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am speechless. She's My, speechless. Are you yeah. a disc person or a drum person? Exactly. So, because I talk about trailers a lot. Yeah. You guys know that. So I, I that is not something that I ever think of covering. Okay. Typically, which which style, disc or drum, is does a better job of slowing and stopping? Disc. All right. You, if you're towing with your Miata, get disc brakes. Okay. Thank you. So don't tow with your Miata. (laughs) What would I be towing? So typically, (laughs) typically you're going to see you're going to see a higher weight trailers probably starting to look more into the disc brakes. Okay. Because they do stop better than drum brakes. Um, They also require less maintenance than Uh, a drum brake, which in long term ownership could be less expensive if you plan on owning your trailer for a period of time. But is it fair to say that 99% of the trailers out there have drum brakes? From what I see in my world and other things, yes. Okay, yeah. so there are other types out there, but pretty much the RV world uses drum brakes. We're seeing some of the the way off-road trailers having disc brake systems. Right, right. But, you know, most trailers we talk about needing a bearing pack every now and then. And, right. you know, it's just the standard drum brake. So both are out there, but... 
Just trust me, folks. You probably have drum breaks. What are you, some terms? You probably gonna, do. What are some terms you're going to see out there? I mean, we said drum, we said disc, but is there also like hydraulic and what else? Yep, you can so, have you can have hydraulic activated breaks. You can have um, which you may see in a surge style or what they call electric over hydraulic. Electric over hydraulic. Okay, tell us about this electric over hydraulic. Sure, just quickly. Yeah, real quick, electric over hydraulic. So basically, hydraulic hydraulically activated brakes, but you have to have an electronic brake controller to activate the hydraulics on them. Uh, Why? mm. Okay, did I lose you on that one? Yeah. So, so you have heard of that on some of the off road extreme units Mm -hmm. and a few of the high ends. Is that? I, yeah. Well, how Why do a hydraulic brakes get actuated if you don't have electricity surge? Yeah. Okay. And surge works how? Surge works how? So, um, and this is pretty widely used on boats. Um, yeah. But it is on some travel trailers out there. I've seen it. It was. Um, it's, it's definitely not commonplace today. Okay. So, basically, as you apply the vehicles on your brake. Or, Go as for you it. Apply the, <laughs> yeah. As you apply the brakes on your vehicle, the trailer behind you is going to be moving faster and it's going to move towards your vehicle, which uh-huh. compresses a piston okay. in the surge section of your coupler, uh-huh. which then applies hydraulic pressure to the brakes. Okay. It's problematic when you're backing uphill. Yeah. I'll uh-huh. just say. Uh-huh. Yep. What is the brake controllers? There's two different kinds that we use right now, right? Ooh, ooh! I know this one. Okay, we use Lindsay, the go. Kurt Echo. We do. Yes. And tell us about the Kurt Echo, Lindsay. It's a thing that you plug into the back of, you plug it into your seven way and then you plug your cord into that. And then it's an app on your phone uh, where you adjust it, which I think is really cool because it's easy. But then everybody says, well, then I have to like have my phone out the whole time. But you don't. You only have to use your phone if you're adjusting it. That's or, correct. Or if you want to manually actuate those brakes. That's because, not entirely true. Ah, do That's they right. add a component? Dun, dun, dun. They do have a component. They do have a component. New to the world. We should have somebody from Kurt talk to us about that. Oh, I sure. guess it's pretty easy, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty easy. I was so surprised to see what it looked like. They said, oh, here's the box. And I, I then said, can you open the box? It's so little. Oh, what's in the box? Yeah. This button looks like an old-fashioned doorbell button it is teeny tiny it's About probably the size of a dime yes okay. maybe a hair bigger maybe a nickel okay but you literally peel the stuff off the back and stick it on your dash or stick it on your console or stick it on the back of your phone mm-hmm. i guess but that'd be bad because you well? hit it yeah don't do that and you just push the button and, and it Bluetooth. activates it your brakes. It runs off of a watch yeah. battery? So like if yes. your trailer is fishtailing, I can just push the button? You push right. the you button. You can push that button versus having to have the app open. Do you have to hold it down? It. Yeah, it's, it's going to be yeah. the same style activation as if it's on your phone, but you don't have to get the phone out and open So you up the hold app. it down mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. long as you want that as long to as happen you want it and to. then you can yep. let go. Yep. So, All right. What other types? What What else do we use here? I mean, we when I got here before we were using too many, um, too many of the wireless options. We were installing under dash old school. Oh yeah, yeah, we did. We've done a lot of dash mount. We've done a lot of trailer mount. I do mean, you there's still different have, styles. Do we still have customers that like insist on that? Because I know the it's, big thing for people in the cart is the Bluetooth aspect of it. Right. They don't trust it, or they don't want to rely on it. So, yeah, I mean, we we still do some dash mount options. Um, it, it really depends on the customer. Most most people are using smartphones. Mm-hmm. They understand them. They understand how to use it. So probably 98 percent of what we're doing is going to be the wireless Kurt Echo. Yeah. Most but, of the customers are good with it. Well, I've hit my knee on so many brake controllers. <laughs> I can't tell you over the yeah. decades. That is definitely it just a thing. makes me say bad things. Ooh. You know, I actually went from <laughs> a Kurt things. Echo, the the wireless one, and then the last time I bought a system to install, I actually did a dash mount, but it was one of their smaller ones that kind of disappears and it only has a button uh-huh. dial the Kurt Spectrum uh-huh. because I'm I don't know why I'm one of the the guys who likes dedicated equipment. Whenever I can use dedicated equipment, for some reason that works for me. There's there's options now that are like this that are kind of, or they bridge the difference a little bit and they're small and you can apply it to the dash, like the curb mm-hmm. button that you just mentioned. Right. So they're, they're trying to get more of a, like an OE look right. out of these smaller integrated style 
brake controllers that still mount on your dash, but it's not underneath by your knees. Right. It's right. just a rotary knob, mm-hmm. basically, that goes on your dash somewhere. And now it's like so many other things. It's become integrated into the new vehicles, too. Yep. So a lot of new vehicles will come with the brake controller already in it mm-hmm. if they have the towing system in it. Right. So uh, if you have that little pull knob on the front and your brake controller is included, then that's pretty easy, too. Yeah, very. Yeah, because it's right there. (laughs) The adjusting it can be tricky because a lot of them, they work different ways, especially the ones under the dash. Right. So I have never tried adjusting one that came on a vehicle. It all just does this self-adjusting thing. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, you can still set like your primary gain output, um, which is the amount of power that's basically going to your brakes which is the and gain we, setting. there's basically usually two different settings that you have to play with to get these things dialed in right yep what yeah are, gain and gain and sensitivity okay gain and se- well, aren't they the same thing well with counseling nope. you can gain sensitivity <laughs> you know i've been told that <laughs> sensitivity is how to- aggressively your brake controller will apply the brakes you read that well i know I, I like how bold it is yeah, very percussive very it aggressive. made me feel like i had to read it uh-huh. How aggressively your brake controller will apply the brake. Cool. So what's gain? So what is gain? Gain is the amount of power a brake controller applies to the brakes. What? Not not how forceful it applies, but the maximum amount of power. Because you it, don't want it to be so the forceful amount of power that it force? locks up. No. Okay. Take it. Okay. You can have a Ugh. you can have a ten pound sledgehammer. It's ten pounds. That's <laughs> ten on the scale of poundage, right? And you can set it down lightly, or you can drop it from five feet. Okay? Or you can grab their ankle and drag them to your room. <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's more than 10 pounds. So, Way more. So sensitivity, is, so this 10 pounds is the gain, where sensitivity is how it applies that gain. Is it setting it down softly or is it dropping it? It's, it's like Clint used to be a teacher or something. That's actually that a pretty was really, good analogy. Yeah, that Does was really work? good. Yeah, I totally really understand works. it now. Came up with that on the fly. I mean, that's a good job. It's good. I'm going to get some chocolate for myself later because that was that chocolate. Worked. Yeah, <laughs> chocolate. I think there's another sugar cookie in there. So now for the analogy using chocolate. Just kidding. Seventy <laughs> percent <laughs> cocoa. <laughs> is that a gain or a sensitivity? Well, if you eat enough, it is definitely a gain. <laughs> mm. If it's milk chocolate, if you you're may lactose have a, intolerant, <laughs> it's a sensitivity. <laughs> How does it hit your system? <laughs> we were serious out. for way too long. I've totally spaced no, out. No, but I understand gain and sensitivity now, so Good. nothing else matters. So what about boost? Boost. What? Boost mode. That's what chocolate I think that's does. beast mode. Okay. Oh. Well, tell, me, tell us boost, and then let's give a, like an example. So talk, talk okay. boost. <laughs> so, so boost, you're not going to see boost on all brake controllers. So boost is going to be... Uh, exactly that it's going to be a boost so it's going to be an increase in power output to over the, your gain over, setting over your gain setting correct so if i say i like the way my trailer feels towing it whenever my have my gain set at six yep. boost could, could goose it all up to so me. so it, yeah so your boost settings can be huh. you know like 15 percent 20 percent increase okay. over over what your setting is okay and you know you may need Why? that if you get into a heavier load situation or something like that so how do you activate boost by slant by panic braking depending on the brake control it's it is it's just another setting so when you go through it you set your gain you set your sensitivity and you set your boost Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. done okay so like i said except for on the cart okay right and it's and right and it's probably not going to be something you can set on an integrated from the factory it's not going to have a boost mode okay it's just something you'll see on some of them yep Okay. Just something else right. that's out there. So something ridiculous that you can that's put right. in there. That's right. Okay. So we had Amy McGee call in and she was having what problem with her brake system and how did you troubleshoot that? What, what was the solution? Uh, so she was actually using a Kurt Echo um, and she was explaining to me that basically as she's braking, like it's all smooth and then all of a sudden it like hits really hard. Like the brakes apply really hard like it's grabbing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, now... I've after driving with a Kurt Echo, towing with a Kurt Echo myself and experiencing this situation, I played with it um, when we went out to uh, Texas Avid Outdoors mm-hmm. um, was when I really got to spend some time towing with one. And I was like experiencing exactly what she's talking about. And when you read the instructions and you look at your gain and you look at your sensitivity, you think, oh, it's 
it's not being sensitive enough. <laughs> so you turn your sensitivity down. Um, well, that's the wrong way. So I have found that you got to go up on the sensitivity setting on the Kurt Echo and it applies those brakes very smoothly. So you don't get like this kind of brake application and then this really hard brake application later. Um, so it starts with a nice firm brake application from the start and it's smooth all the way till you come to the so stop. So it introduces your gain setting almost immediately sooner versus, yep. versus a little bit of a delay as it's right. ramping up to your gain setting. Yep. Okay. So it's the sensitivity. Sensitivity not setting. The gain. Right. Not the gain, the sensitivity. So I like, so if you're setting up a Kurt Echo, obviously your gain is going to be based on your, your brake control or on your tow vehicle and your trailer. Mm -hmm. And sensitivity, if you're experiencing this situation, I'd go and go more towards 10 and mm -hmm. test and tune. So it's, it's kind of like a race car. Okay. You got to take it out. You got to play with it. You got to find what's comfortable for you. And then that still can change depending upon driving conditions. Okay. Okay. What about what about the gain setting? How do you how do you fine tune that? How do you know that you got a problem? A problem? Well, yeah. If your gain is too high or too low, uh, how do you know it's not right? So, usually, what I tell customers uh -huh. is, if you feel if you're being pushed, if you feel like your trailer's pushing you, then you probably don't have enough gain. If it feels like it's locking up or the trailer is like jerking or uh -huh. bucking, then you have it too high. So you really got to kind of find that in between where it's comfortable for you me personally i am a i'm a high gain guy i like my gain on my trailer that's why you drink high. protein shakes right? that's right that's right yeah. got to get those gains okay oh, geez <laughs> <laughs> well that's why i like the that handheld brake because mm -hmm. that's how i can test it when yep. i'm driving yep because i want that brake on my trailer to be able to seriously slow down or stop my vehicle just with the trailer brakes you know, and you can feel it go when you're in but the without locking lot. the tires, but without it going slam and yeah. skidding. Right. Exactly. So you can test that in the parking lot going slow. When I say sl stopping the vehicle, I mean when I'm going five miles an hour. Right. You know, you yep. should be able to stop it right then. And then I can tell. But that's harder to do when you're trying to set a brake control and you're using the, the app. The app. Correct. It is a little harder to do there. Yeah. I agree. I think it's still trial and error. It's just a few more mm -hmm. clicks, if you will. But yeah. but I think that that's what I like is you mentioned doing this in a like a parking lot or something mm -hmm. like that with your rig and mm -hmm. preferably with your rig loaded about the same way you typically would be traveling. Mm -hmm. that, that being your baseline. Starting exactly. Point. Exactly. You load 500 pounds in a trailer that has a 3,500 pound, you know, standard dry weight. That can change. Absolutely. You're breaking. Absolutely. And where that where that weight is can change how it feels and how it yeah. tows. But we have trailers so. that have massive freshwater tanks. Yeah. <laughs> if it, and, and if you haul with it yeah. empty or halfway full or all the way full, those are three extremely different yeah. circumstances and water sloshes. Yes. So that's another sensation. The movement, movement of fluid weight. That's right. It's easy to add six, 700 pounds. So moving around so is that the best way to just set your gain and set your sensitivity is going five miles an hour in a parking lot and testing the, i think it's a good baseline the stop yeah i think it's a good baseline okay. but really i think i mean yeah getting a good baseline is, is good but really once you get going you may have to make some initial adjustments on the fly until you feel comfortable with it. are there are there different types of ways brake controllers work like you, I think we were talking earlier and there's like two different ways that, that are like an old school way brake controllers work and a newer way. Yeah. So they've got uh, the older school way that you're talking about is, is a time delay brake control, which is definitely not very common these days. Uh, it, it would basically have your gain setting and it would do a timed ramp up to that gain setting so no matter how hard you hit your brake pedal right in your tow vehicle it's going to take three seconds to fully yeah apply it basically or right yeah it's going to take that, that name, period of time why would you name a braking system time delayed uh, i don't want to time not, delay brakes at all but <laughs> why, why would that the last even thing work? i want to delay time well i mean so i think it's because it was it was an early form of this technology it was an early form of this technology and i think it was very commonly used with livestock. hauling livestock yeah yeah right yeah. yeah yeah i mean because you don't want your animals getting banged around in the trailer 
So you don't want this like all of a sudden this jerk that throws your animals forward in the trailer. So yeah, it would slowly true. ramp up so they could stand there and not get tossed around. Um, so, yeah. So but but definitely something we don't see anymore, uh, at least in the RV that world I've, so much. that I've seen. Yeah. yeah. So the other style is going to be basically a proportional. Ooh, proportional. Yeah. Big word. That's a big word. That is a big word. Define it. Ooh, I don't think I can define proportional. Okay, just tell us how it works. So basically the way this works is it uses accelerometers. Like your phone. It, just like your smartphone, yes. Or a Wii remote. What? Or a Wii remote. What? Or... <laughs> Doing the same. Really. Okay. What? Yeah. Modern so digital it's a phones. thing that detects movement. Yeah, it's how you get your step count. Oh, yeah, I knew that. It, it, it's okay. How, it's how your camera phone knows the orientation of your phone so it can change the okay, aspect yeah. ratio and all it's that. It's like a pendulum. Type yeah, thing. yeah, pendulum Did type you thing. Did you say camera phone? Mm-hmm. Camera phone. Camera phone. Mm-hmm. Camera phone. Because because when you can, if you're in landscape mode or portrait mode, it changes the viewfinder if you turn your phone. Yeah, but just, you, you just called it. Ca- never mind. You called it a camera phone instead of a smartphone. Yeah, but I was talking about the camera, so it made sense. Okay? It did. I I didn't have any issues with it. <laughs> I specifically, top talking about the camera. I w- I was following. So so it uses these accelerometers, right? right? So it can. So when you actually start to come to a stop, that accelerometer is going to determine your braking force needed to output to the trailer. Yeah. And does the does the Kurt brake controller this just plugged in? Does it work the same way? Yes, it is it proportional. Okay. Yep. So. So yeah. yeah. So if you set your gain at five and you're just making a normal everyday stop, it may not. It's not going to go all the way to five. It doesn't need mm-hmm. to go all the way to five. So basically, when you set it at five, that's the maximum setting it's going to go to in an emergency stop. So if you slam on your brakes, it's going to go to five. Right. Okay. But otherwise, it's going to just do what it thinks is necessary to bring you to a stop. So, Clint, what about those off-roaders? Well, I think that off-roaders, they uh, they typically have to worry about more scenarios. They're taking their trailers and their rigs into more unknowns. That's why they're doing it. Yeah. So, you're going to have different ground types, slippery, you know, different friction levels. Yeah. You're, you're on sand, sand, rock, mud, you name it. So, they have to be able to control those things more in a more known and refined manner. What's out there for that? So, yeah, so they so there's actually uh, one brake control that I'm aware of that that is actually really cool. It's actually has a um, basic proportional mode for like everyday towing. Okay, um, which is just like your Kurt Echo and your standard brake control that we're running. But it also has what they call as a user controlled mode. Okay, so basically the user can set a brake output on it and it is going to be that consistent brake output every single time they apply the brakes so if they are towing through sand okay and which can cause traction issues or slow you down or through mud or something like that we don't want the brakes being engaged too heavily okay so they didn't slow you down because you kind of need speed to get through sand and mud sometimes right right? carry momentum you kind of want to float over it a little bit so, but if you're making steep descents down rocks or something like you that, definitely you definitely want, want that trailer to maybe grab a little more. So you want to turn that dial up. Um, and this product is actually made by Red Arc. It's the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite. Um, and it is one of those integrated style looking brake controls. So the only thing that you see on your dash is this rotary little knob. dial. Yeah, a little yeah. Ro- dial rotary knob. Oh, you like dial it up or dial it back? Exactly. And it's about the size oh. of, a, of a quarter is kind of the diameter of the style is what uh, I Yeah, think. that's probably pretty yeah. close to it. Somewhere in there, cigarette lighter size. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. And it, and it works in both ways. It uh, works in both ways. Yeah. You can, you change the settings on it. Basically you go through a, like a button procedure mm-hmm. on it and that will switch it back from. But one. this thing looks like a Kurt spectrum on steroids. Wow. Uh, it doesn't you would look love that, that way. Yeah, I know. But I my know. My truck has a built in system. So I'm just going to run. Well, that. I'm putting the spectrum in my truck. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to see it. So we, uh, we don't carry the red arc. We don't. Huh. So, hey, shout out to Red Arc. We think it's cool. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, what have you learned today? I learned about 10 pound hammers. Out of all this, you learned gain and sensitivity. Which and is chocolate. really, but isn't gain and sensitivity really the takeaway most of our customers need to know? 
That's true. Oh, that's a very good that point. That is yeah. true. Yeah. So they can figure out what's happening with their brake control and why it's working or not. And don't be afraid to make those incremental adjustments to dial it in so that you are more stress-free driving. That's exactly right. Yep. Yeah. Everybody, thank you for joining us for this week's episode of the RV Small Talk Podcast. And uh, full stop, we have really enjoyed our time together. So uh, check out the show notes at rvsmalltalk.com. Give us questions at questions or input or just correct us if you want to at questions yeah. at rvsmalltalk.com. And uh, head on over to our Facebook group, RV Small Talk Community, and join the conversation there. Lindsay. What? Take us out. Bye. Good job. Ha, <laughs> ha,